My name is Stefan Schmidt. I'm a professor of political science and public policy. Um, as you know, I also am interested in coastal zone management and coastal uh, issues. And so uh, today I want to talk to you a little bit about what we call marine debris. Um, it's an interesting field. Um, a lot of people are not really studied too much about marine debris, but I recommend two books to you. Uh, one of them is Sky Moody's book called Washed Up, uh, The Curious Journeys of Flotsam and Jetsam. It's a very interesting book, a lot of anecdotes. Uh, Sky Moody is uh, a lovely person and I had uh, the privilege of having lunch with her and talking about this uh, in Seattle. Uh, the other book is Curtis Evesmeyer and Eric Ciliano's Flotsometrics and the Floating World. Uh, this is a terrific book, and uh, Curtis and I had a chance to have a couple of adult beverages at the uh, Corinthian Yacht Club in, um, in Shilshol Marina and talked about the issue of flotsam, gyres, uh, and the movement of ocean currents. Um, that uh, book, Flotsometrics, is to me one of the most interesting histories of um, the sort of the movement of the sea and in historical perspective and in contemporary terms of course we are concerned about pollution we're concerned about litter on beaches and um, other issues that are related to um, uh, floating debris um, so let's take a quick look at the consequences of uh, just one event and that is the recent tsunami in Japan um, and its impact on marine debris. And I'll come back to you at the other end of it, uh, and we can talk a little bit about what uh, we might have learned from that. So from there, more than 15,000 people dead, 130,000 people forced from their homes. And tonight, an amazing kind of environmental delayed reaction, a huge island of trash and debris from the quake drifting across the Pacific Ocean toward U.S. shores. NBC's Kate Snow with us here in the studio with more on this, Kate. Brian, just after the tsunami hit, scientists at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and the University of Hawaii started making models using calculations based on tides and currents to project where all that debris from Japan would end up. But now they have proof, sightings from a ship telling them where potentially millions of tons of trash is and where it's headed. March 11th, tsunami waves crash over Japan, wiping out entire communities, sweeping everything that isn't nailed down out to sea. More than 300,000 buildings, cars, boats, refrigerators, furniture, you name it. And this is where it all is today. Giant fields of floating debris in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. The area that we're talking about that this debris is floating within is something on the order of twice the size of Texas. U.S. Navy ships have had to steer around the islands of garbage and now the discovery that it's moving faster than scientists had expected. They now project some of it will hit the Midway Islands by January. Currents would sweep it to the U.S. West Coast in 2013 and back to the Hawaiian Islands in 2014 and 2015. I'm very concerned about the impact. The everyday pollution from refrigerators and televisions and ports, that's a lot of toxic chemicals that are going to stress our marine life and habitats even more than they already are. Last month, scientists at the University of Hawaii asked the crew on board this historic Russian tall ship, the Palada, to document what they saw as they sailed from Honolulu to Vladivostok, Russia. Just past the Midway Islands, they couldn't miss the mess. The boat's crew made notes about appliances, boards, plastic bottles, buoys from fishing nets, drums, boots. A fishing boat they hoisted up left no doubt about where it all came from. The markings say... Fukushima Prefecture. Government scientists stress that this isn't a wave of debris that will hit all at once, but all this trash could affect coastal habitats, wildlife, boaters as well. They're also asking West Coast and Hawaii residents to help them track this trash. Brian, you can learn more about that on our website. Of course, that's NBCNightlyNews.com. Really an unbelievable slow motion story. Kate Snow with it here tonight. Kate, thanks as always. And we want to report a comment. Well, clearly, uh, the tsunami caused uh, an enormous amount of destruction and has 
essentially infused a, a massive amount of marine debris into the Pacific Ocean and into the gyres that uh, uh, basically move things around uh, that particular ecosystem. What is astonishing to me is that the Japanese have generally tried to be uh, careful about cleanliness. They have tried to be a country that is known for its neatness. Uh, recycling is, is, is fairly common in, in Japan. Their streets are clean. They try to keep their beaches in order. And yet, years, perhaps decades, of very careful stewardship and environmental consciousness is wiped out by just one uh, natural disaster such as a tsunami, which in the past, uh, hundreds of years ago, would have produced a lot of marine debris, but most of it would have been natural and biodegradable. There would have been, you know, trees and plants and dead animals and other things that uh, disintegrate and, and are eaten and sink to the bottom of the ocean fairly quickly. In, in 2011, um, when natural disasters such as that occur, um, they essentially sweep up um, an enormous amount of uh, human material, things that are man-made, um, toxic chemicals, vehicles, um, building materials, plastics, and pour that into the ecosystem where much of it basically remains for perhaps centuries uh, because a lot of it is really not biodegradable and um, even when it is degradable, I mean trucks and automobiles are degradable ultimately, but in the meantime they are leaking oil and gas and, and other chemicals uh, into the environment and the consequences of that uh, I think we don't really understand at this point. So in a class on marine debris, I think it, it was very important to take a look at this short report, of, um, f a TV report, uh, and the visuals that come with it so that we have kind of a better grasp of, of what we're looking at. Thankfully, of course, um, in, in many cases, marine debris is, is uh, at, a, at a much smaller scale Although you will find as we move into the book and look at some other material um, that a little bit of pollution every single day um, in coastal communities all over the world does pretty quickly accumulate into garbage patches of enormous proportions uh, in most of the oceans uh, of the world. So marine debris, flotsam and jetsam a very important subject for people studying um, coastal zone management and, and, and ocean management. Stefan Schmidt, see you on the internet.